Howdy folks, Pappy Stew here. Hope this finds you all well. You know, recently I was vlogging about the Gulf oil spill and uh, our dependence on the petroleum industry in general and almost every facet of our lives in the products that we use, the transportation of the products we use, and um, our need to move into other technologies away from petroleum-based technologies. Just so everybody here that doesn't know me real well knows that I'm not just talking out my backside and that I might know a little bit about what I'm talking about. I've been in the energy industry for a little over 35 years around there. Um, I won't try to get the numbers exactly right. Big picture, I've got about 17 years in nuclear engineering, nuclear energy, and nuclear power plant operation. Uh, around three years in geothermal type energy production, another about 17 plus years in combined cycle, uh, natural gas turbine, uh, power generation, and uh, oh, a few years in fossil fuel generation uh, and during the Navy time, uh, oil fire type electrical generation, and now for, well, no, closer to three years in uh, hydro generation in uh, the seventh largest power plant in the world, the largest one in this country. Uh, it's actually the sixth now after the disaster that the Russians had at the number six one here in the last year. I told people that uh, in that vlog that in the comments that I felt that we'd walked away from our nuclear power uh, program here in this country foolishly. So I want to talk about it. It's clean and efficient and it does have some uh, complications and problems that aren't really insurmountable. A lot of what's gone on with it has been uh, politics more than facts and uh, hysteria and media response. Uh, those primarily came from the events at um, Three Mile Island and then Chernobyl. But uh, actually, uh, Three Mile Island demonstrated the inherent safety of the designs that we use rather than proving that uh, nuclear power was uh, unreliable or dangerous uh, this media spin it that way it in fact proved that the design of BWRs the PWRs that's boiling water reactors and pressurized water reactors is inherently safe because the Three Mile Island core, when they got in and finally investigated, had been pretty much completely 95% damaged and lost cooling. Um, they moved the steam bubble out of the pressurizer into the core and completely melted the core and proved, in fact, that the China syndrome was complete hocus-pocus BS from uh, media and movies like uh, the China syndrome, etc., when the mass, the core, uh, um, misshaped itself out of a critical mass shape, it just shut itself down and then all we had is a big mess in the pot in the reactor vessel. So it in fact proved that um, that type of a catastrophic accident is uh, fantasy. Now Chernobyl was a completely different matter. It was not a um, water moderated core. It was a graphite moderated core, an older design, one that we had as early as our very first reactor that uh, Enrico Fermi built underneath the stadium there in Chicago. And it has a positive alpha T versus the water based moderated cores which have a negative alpha T, but uh, if it's operated properly it's a reasonable design, not not really the best. What in fact happened at Chernobyl that caused the catastrophic accident there was the management and the party people forced operations against their uh, rabid and avid uh, arguments against doing so to bypass safety features, all the safety features associated with the reactor in question and do some highly um, unwise tests which ended up in the results of the uh, accident and the catastrophic uh, consequences thereof and the loss of the land and and uh, the loss of lives and everything else that went along with that and it's still a mess there as, to this day. Um, but that was human error, not 
reactor design and not well thought out engineer, nuclear engineering program. And uh, that moves me on to the next point is in this country our engineering has not really been very standardized like it has in France and some of the other countries that produce as much as 95 percent of their energy with nuclear power rather than having a standardized format design we've had a whole bunch of different hodgepodge designs that have to be evaluated, approved, uh, and then constructed and then maintained and operated and they they, they're different from design design, which creates less efficiency, more cost, etc. So standard engineering is definitely a way to go to deal with those type of issues. I've already mentioned the impact of politics and disinformation as far as um, causing our nuclear power program to be shrunk back and uh, overregulated and basically just killed it to where it was at the time when all this went down. Um, one big drawback that a lot of people always bring up in regard to nuclear power is uh, the radioactive byproducts and the waste from the process that has like cobalt 60 a half-life of 2.6 times 10 to the sixth years so it lasts for a real long time and if you try to stick it in a carbon steel or stainless steel drum or something of that nature or a tank or something of that nature or, and if you're not careful about how much material you get in such a form, critical mass, mass geometric shape, you can create problems. Um, there are some technologies that were proposed that look very promising, and I, and I think they've actually been developed even more since the last time I looked into them, and that is glass bead, bead uh, impregnation of... of uh, radioactive byproducts because a carbon steel or stainless steel or metal type drum you know won't last 10 2.6 times 10 to 6 years it'll rust and and then the material that's in will get out and then you read about it getting into the uh, environment or in the water table but glass like obsidian or volcanic rock w lasts almost indefinitely so if you embed the material in a diffuse the radioactive waste in, in glassification, glass feeding in a concentration where the radioactive dose rates and the proximity of the material prevents any kind of uh, problem radiologically or environmentally, that's a very good solution and it can also be stored in that form in areas of very, very low environmental impact on the uh, condition of the material when it's stored. Um, so there are some solutions to that problem that have been kind of pushed to the side over the political and um, rhetoric that's gone on in regard to the nuclear power program. Our ultimate solution would probably be best served to continue to move ahead on the research in regard to fusion where we use Tomax to create a fusion process and years ago we actually broke that point where the amount of energy that we put into the process equaled the amount of energy we got out so we reached a point where it's actually neutral energy we need to move ahead from there some of the biggest problems obviously being uh, contamination of the actual process by the containment facilities so and perhaps down the road when we develop more technologies in the nature of superconductors and that type of thing, we might be able to contain the, the plasma flux with magnetic fields instead of actual physical materials, and that will require a significant amount of energy in itself. Anyway, I guess the big picture for us to remember when it comes to energy is that we need to be pragmatic in our thinking in regard to it, and use logic and technology and fact-based decision processes to provide the energy we need in our daily lives in order to move away from products like petroleum-based industries that have a lot of negative impacts on our lives. I think I went over on this. I might speed it up a little bit so it'll fit, which will make it sound like I'm talking really fast. But anyway, I hope you all have a final one. Pappy Stu said it, and I'm out and on the side.